Hello and welcome on the IBP series powered by Camelot. Today, part three of the optimization, which was not mentioned in the original agenda, let's discuss about aggregated constraint uh, in optimizer. Just as a reminder, what we've seen so far was the optimizer concept. Then last episode, we've seen the configuration. Now we will be focused on the aggregated constraint in the optimization, uh, particular capabilities in IBP, which is very interesting. The aggregated constraint concept is only available in the optimizer scenario. If you are running a heuristics only, sorry, you cannot use. Second point is this concept is based on additional planning levels and kefir, and it is quite smart, you will see that. And then when do we need to actually call for this aggregated constraint scenario? Whenever you have to put in relation several planning objects together, like in the campaign planning, like in the production setup optimization, like in transportation scenarios, or for instance, managing customer priority. We'll have in the next slides more detail about those use cases. The first UCS I want to discuss with you today is the campaign planning. There is no campaign planning management in IBP as such. What we can do with aggregated constraints is to close some of the gaps. So like here, uh, when doing the planning, although the demand is distributed over the time, mixing the different colors, we wish the optimizer by means of these aggregated constraints to regroup the production in such a way that they would simulate a kind of a campaign planning. On the technical side, we see the different planning level used in aggregated constraint topic. Okay. And one of them is this one, for instance, with prod log source production source and aggregation level. And by means of this one, we can force the systems to have a minimum production by group of product of, of similar recipes, of course, blue, uh, blue, green, and orange in our case. So it's a good case where you would close some of the gaps that we have no planning campaign planning in standard, but with aggregated constraint, there is some, some chance. Here is another use case which can benefit from the aggregated constraints where from the distribution perspective in the network, like we can see here, there is the normal transportation being by the, by the, the truck mode. And these are small enough to be very flexible, but sometimes you need to regroup for long distance transport between locations, for instance. You need to regroup the products together to, in order to fulfill like a, like a ship here, like a boat. So by means of aggregated constraint, there is also some, some capabilities. You would probably be using the prod lock lock to aggregate, aggregated planning level and the same way log prod prod log to from prod log from sorry uh, planning level and possibly if you want to insert uh, to introduce some resource management in this constraint scenario you would use this other one which is prod log log from and transportation resource aggregated scenario because in order to come to such a scenario with a transportation regroupment of product despite the delivery date being with, uh, different The next scenario I want to discuss with you is the customer demand prioritization. In the standard optimizer scenario, this prioritization is made by the customer and product combinations, which is very detailed, very granular. And in some cases, you need to have a more aggregated management of those priorities by, for instance, group of customers, domestic, export, and so on. So to do so, you would use the aggregated constraint topic applied to the customer. How does it happen in the systems? Product, location, customer, aggregation, planning level, which you would use in order to define those penalties by group of customers and therefore prioritize optimizer to work uh, more for, towards this group of customers compared to this other group of customers. And last but not least, in the customer demand prioritization, don't forget that there is also a demand stream capabilities, which is not implemented in the Asper standard in SAP IBP1, but you can activate it. And it's a very nice way to differentiate between different types of demand, like forecast, sales, whatever distribution demand, and so on. 
Although there is many other use cases, let's close this chapter with the, the last use case I want to discuss with you, which is the aggregated constraint applied to storage limits. Here, in some business, you may have the legal requirements to hold in stock, uh, for instance, sugar or uh, alcohol uh, volumes. But of course, in the company, uh, sugar products or alcohol products can be many. Like here in this example, we see that for the sugar, let's say group one is the sugar. We've got here four different products representing the sugar. And legally speaking, the, the company has to have a minimum and a maximum independently of the packaging of the sugar. And likewise, for the alcohols here, we've only two different products. So with the aggregated constraint, you can define that by mean of by mean of the prod lock aggregated planning level, which allows you to regroup product and location together and establish those constraints at a group of prod lock together. For the rest of this episode, let's stay in the system and discuss about the configuration element of aggregated constraint concept. Here we see the planning levels in SCM lab solution from Camelot, okay, which are calling for aggregated constraints. They are pretty standard in this case, okay, by prod lock aggregation, prod lock curse, prod lock lock from, whenever it is distribution and so on. I've gone already with you uh, based on the use case I described on those different planning levels. There is one which is pretty technical, don't delete it, it doesn't work anymore. And one point I want to show you, it's in all of these planning levels, you can introduce your own attributes in order to define an aggregated constraint at this planning level, at this attribute level, if you want. But don't forget that all these attributes which are attached to the planning level must be root. If you don't do, anyway, you cannot activate the planning area. And once you have done that, which is pretty simple, in fact, huh? then you can benefit of the, the key figure attached to this planning level, these different planning levels, in order to define those aggregated constraints. If I check, for instance, the prod lock aggregated constraint, this is about storage capacity, storage stop. And we see here four key figures, which are attached to the maximum inventory, minimum inventory, Remember this group of uh, product where I want to have a minimum sugar level? Here it is. You can say, for instance, for a product group, which would be an attribute of product aggregated, for a product group level, I wish to have a minimum inventory of that much and a maximum inventory of that much. And uh, assign to that as well in case you violate the, or the min and the max. So this, these are the key figures. I, I'll let you go through the other ones. Okay, let's take another example like, uh, like, like, like the production location source, production source aggregated level. Here, what do we have? We can establish a minimum and a maximum production. And that's where we can see, ah, with a minimum production, we can say we want to produce at least that much of such green product. And the system will automatically if there is any demand, fill up those, uh, the quantity to produce by group of product by means of the source ID location and product combination. And again, the, the red, the blue color would be an attribute within this planning level, which you would use to determine the cost attached to this group, like blue or whatever. Not to forget also in the configuration to review your optimizer profile, your SNOP profile exactly, so that you consider the aggregated constraint. For that, let me edit this optimizer. And here at the bottom, you have a setup to say or not, don't check it if you want to have the aggregated constraint to be considered by the optimizer. And if you do so, plus the other uh, utilization of the planning level and key figure, then you have a nicely working optimizer with aggregated constraint. We are at the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget a like yeah. or a subscription oh, yeah. makes my day. Thanks in advance. Next episode, we will discuss about how to use the optimizer as an end user from an end user perspective by maintaining the cost and analyzing the results of the optimizer. Bye now, see you next time.